with Dr. Vanita Zahn. As the pandemic continues, researchers are trying to get a better picture of who's been infected, who's at risk, and how to slow the spread. There's a new study out from the State Health Department and the SUNY School of Public Health looking at these stats. And the dean of the school, Dr. David Holdgrave, is here to break it down. Good to have you with us. Thanks for having me, Benita. So your figures, this study goes back to March. Um, I think it was about 14% of the population appear to be infected. What does that tell us about today? I think what it really tells us is that uh, if uh, at the end of March, and again, this was a study that was done looking at antibodies uh, from a little over 15,000 people uh, who were visiting over 99 grocery stores across the state uh, as of uh, later in April. So that uh, tells us a bit what's going on in terms of infections at the end of March. If that's about 14%, uh, it tells us that also at that time, about 86% of people had not yet experienced uh, infection with uh, coronavirus. And I think that's important because even though that we're now a few weeks past that, uh, it really tells us that even with a large number, um, like 2.1 million people probably were infected with coronavirus uh, at the end of March in New York State, um, that tells us that there's still a lot of people in the state that could still become infected. And so as we begin our reopening process now, it's important that all of the steps that are being taken to be careful are really implemented very slowly and very carefully. And I think the prudence that's going into uh, taking taking care to reopen is really critical. And to me, that's one of the takeaways of this antibody serial survey study. And the study also saw how many people actually exhibited symptoms, if you will, had COVID-19 versus those who had SARS-CoV-2 antibodies. Uh, help us understand this. Yes, well, I think it's really important to make a distinction between infections and diagnoses. And when we think about the number of um, diagnosed cases that we would hear in the media or on the governor's press conference every day, um, at, at a time that was sort of matched uh, to, to our study, uh, there were about 189,000 diagnosed cases in the state of New York. And of course, those cases are diagnosed by using the, the test where it's a rather invasive nasal swab. Um, and uh, we were, have been used to, I think, hearing about the number of diagnosed cases. But that's very different than the number of people who are living with coronavirus infection. And instead of 189,000 diagnosed cases, uh, this antibody uh, study allows us to make an extrapolation to how many people had SARS-CoV-2 in the state, which we believe is about 2.1 million people. And it really suggests, I think, that from the time someone becomes infected to the time they're diagnosed, they can fall out of the system in many ways. You might not develop uh, symptoms. You might have very mild symptoms. Uh, you might confuse your symptoms with something else like influenza or some other uh, illness. Uh, also, uh, if you do think that you're ill enough to get a test uh, for uh, COVID-19, you have to uh, know where to call to get uh, information about how to receive that test. Then you have to um, talk to the person there and they have to determine that you're sick enough or at risk enough to get a test and then you have to actually go get that test. So uh, from the time one becomes infected to the time one becomes diagnosed, there's actually a lot of intermediate steps there. And those intermediate steps really account for the difference between saying 2.1 million people probably were living with uh, coronavirus uh, antibodies at the end of March versus about 189,000 people who had diagnosed cases. And of those 2.1 million people, many of them were could have been spreaders, but never symptomatic. <laughs> That's exactly right. Um, there certainly were a, a fraction of uh, persons who never developed symptoms or had very mild symptoms. But at the same time, one of the things we're learning from the literature is that even if you're asymptomatic, you can still spread SARS-CoV-2 to other people. And so I think the kind of guidance that's being given now about wearing a mask in public 
is really important because even if the mask doesn't protect you very well, if you're negative, um, it can be very helpful if you actually have SARS-CoV-2, but you're asymptomatic. And that mask is very helpful avoiding you transmitting to someone else. So uh, the uh, masks really play a key role in avoiding that asymptomatic transmission in society. And Dr. Holtgrave, before we let you go, especially given the backdrop of the, um, the protests that are going on now, your study uh, also looked at the disparity in communities and how the African American and Latino community were greatly, more greatly impacted and probably still are as we go forward. Absolutely. Um, in fact, uh, we found that of the roughly 2.1 million people who were likely living with um, uh, SARS-CoV-2 antibodies at the end of March, of that 2.1 million people, uh, about 36.6% uh, are Latino, uh, about 20% uh, are African American. And if we compare that to the uh, size of the population, so in the general population uh, in New York State, roughly 19% of persons are uh, Latinx, uh, about 19.6% are African American. And so what we really see is that in communities of color, there really is a disproportionate impact. And we've heard about this before in terms of COVID-19 fatality data. This actually shows us kind of at the other end of the continuum, if you will, when we're talking about developing antibodies and early on in infection, um, that that uh, disparity is very much there. So we really have to find ways not only to identify these disparities, but to build health equity as well. Dr. David Holdgrave, the uh, dean at the State University of New York School of Public Health. Always fascinating to hear from you. I look forward to the next paper that comes out on your collaboration with State Health. Be well. Thank you. And thanks for joining us for the, this edition of Healthy. We'll see you next time.